प्रचना प्रचन रंजना जसो दंदना प्रचन रंजना ಜಮುನಾಥೀರಾಪನಕ್ಷಾಧಾ ಕುಂಜಿಹಾರಿಧವ ಕುಂಜಿಹಾರಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಜನ ಪಾಲ ಗಿರಿ ಬದಾರಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಜನ ಪಾಲ ಗಿರಿ ಬದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ರಂಜನ ಚಿರಾಪನಕ್ಷಾರಿ ಚಾಮುನಾಚಿರಾಪನಕ್ಷಾರಿ ಜಯರಾಧಾಧವ ಜಯರಾಧಾಧವ ಕುಂಜಿಹಾರಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಚನಾಚಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರು ಮಿಲಿತಾಂಶೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟಾಂ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಯ್ಯಂ ತಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಪತಿ ಬಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಚುಥಾಪತಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ್ಚೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಸಹಕನಾರಘುನಾಥ ಥಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈಥ ಸಾಪತೂಥ ಹರಿಜನಾ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहकना ललिता श्री विशाकान विधंश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीना बंधु जगतपत गोपेशा गोपिका कंट राधा कंट नमोस्त थप्त कंसना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुथे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिथानाभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैताधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतल श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्य पारी भस्तेश हरे कृष्ण I am most grateful to be among all of you on this most auspicious day in this most auspicious place. Today <clears throat> all over India is the celebration of Diwali For many it is the new year So many celebrations happening For many Diwali is a time to blow off unlimited firecrackers and in the process create lots of noise and put so much smoke in the air The nature of this world is to take something very sacred and make it into something quite mundane. Because as we were speaking the world is a reflection of our state of consciousness the consciousness is like an antenna in a sense is 
what we associate with, we access that energy. When we're in the association of saintly people, satsang, when we're hearing transcendental sound vibration, harikata, or kirtan, the vibration of God's names. We're tuning into the transcendental divine energy of God's divine grace within this creation and beyond this creation. Golokera premadana harinam sankirtan that the names of the Lord have descended from Goloka, the highest planet in the spiritual world. They are simultaneously ever existing there, and they are also manifesting here. So when, with a humble and sincere heart, we connect to the Holy Name, we are actually accessing the grace of the spiritual world into our hearts. Mahatsevam dwaram ahura vimaktes tamodwaram yoshita sanghi sangam. Lord Rishabdev has spoken this in the Srimad Bhagavat. That when we associate with saintly people, we naturally become saintly. The doors to liberation are opened in our lives from within. And when we associate with people who are too much infatuated by greed, arrogance, selfish passions, envy, anger, illusion, and we are, on a very subtle level, very deep in our heart, greatly affected by that. And it will manifest as the way we think, the way we speak, the way we act. Association is so important because not only are we accessing and being transformed, either positive or negative, according to what we access, but also, like antennas, we are transmitting whatever our consciousness may be. There are three modes of nature, sattva-guna, rajaguna, tamaguna. According to the modes we choose to associate with, we become affected and molded in that way, and then we transmit that energy to influence others. When there is thousands of people in one place, and almost everybody is sincere with an earnest heart to hear Hari Kata, to hear these spiritual subject matters with a genuine desire to be spiritually nourished, to be purified, to love God, to access that grace that will help us to overcome the impediments of this world. And there are limitless impediments. But there's one power, one power that can take us beyond every type of impediment. And that is kripa, divine grace or mercy. So when we are all together to hear, to chant, to inspire toward Krishna, toward God. What an incredible energy that is. Everyone around us is helping us 
to actually open our hearts to receive the grace of Krishna. And then individually and collectively we become not like just an antenna but like a whole power plant emitting this energy of grace. That is satsang. But the tendency is when we are very much putting ourself in the center and taking Krishna or God out of the center, it's like if you have a clean cloth and you take dirty water, it actually filters the water clean. Yes? But if you have a filthy, dirty, contaminated cloth and you take clean water and put it through it, it makes it dirty. So our consciousness, we could either transform selfish material energy into pure devotional service through our consciousness, or we could take what is sacred and actually present it as something polluted. Of you, can't, you cannot pollute what is sacred, but you could mix so many other things in it. And the effect is it's polluted. Just like water is actually never polluted. Because water is always pure. H2O. But when you mix so many other elements that are not H2O, so many other chemicals from different types of power plants and, and sewage and everything else, then there's hardly any water left in it. So Diwali is such a sacred day. And in other places, Christmas is a sacred day. But for many, they changed it to Xmas, so they don't have to think about Christ. <laughs> they can think about X. And they can celebrate. It's the holiest day of the year. Holiday means holy day. And in some sacred days, they slaughter animals like anything. But Saragrahi, a truly spiritual person, is one who seeks the essence. Why is this day sacred? What is it for? Why has God presented this to the world? All sacred days are ultimately to help us to focus our entire consciousness on the purpose of life. which is to love Krishna, to love God, to learn to be a compassionate instrument of God's grace in whatever we do, wherever we are, and whoever we're with. Ramchandra, after he was exiled from Ayodhya, due to the envy of his stepmother, Kaikeyi. She was actually a great devotee. She loved Ram more than everything in her life. But due to the association of Mantara, her maidservant, who was so so envious and so convinced that whatever she was thinking was the truth. That's human nature. When we're arrogant, when we're envious, when we're greedy, when we have these anartas, 
The nature of maya or this illusory energy is to convince us. Really convince us. Not superficially pretending for some ulterior reason, but really convince us that what I believe is right. Otherwise, how will we really move forward with such conviction? To the extent that we're actually making so many offenses and even atrocities toward others. Kaikei was convinced that Ram was actually a very bad person. And she convinced this great devotee, one of Ram's mothers, to banish him for 14 years. She was so convinced that envy, like a little spark, Mantara made it blaze into such a fire that even when her own husband, Dasarat, died of separation of Ram because of her, it did not faze her the slightest. It was just like, that's the way business is. For me to do the right thing, some, some loss will be. So what? A day before, she was willing to give her life a million times for Dasarat. Anyways, um, I don't have tell, time to speak the whole Ramayana, but after 14 years, Ram returned to Ayodhya on the Amavasya, the dark moon night. And on that day, on that night, Hanuman, Bharat were there to greet, were here in Ayodhya to greet him. And all the residents who for so long, those 14 years were like 14,000 years for the residents of Ayodhya because they loved Ram. They all lit lamps, flames on their rooftops, on their doorsteps, on their windows, in their hands to welcome Ram back, back home. So Diwali is a festival of the heart, our hearts, like the Amavasya, like the dark moon night, they have been living in darkness for so long. Krishna Surya Sa Maya Hoya Andhakar. Krishna is like light, Maya is like darkness. With the lamps of our gratitude, with the lamps of our love, we offer them to welcome our beloved Lord back home in our hearts. That is Diwali. A time to really focus on making our whole life for this purpose and to celebrate the Lord's grace, to celebrate the Lord's coming into our lives individually and collectively. And offering the lamps of our love means offering our life for his pleasure. And if you blow off firecrackers with that consciousness, then those firecrackers become transcendental. But I don't know how many people are doing that. Otherwise it just becomes some Tamaguna explosion. But here in Vrindavan, there's another 
very, very sweet pastime that takes place in Diwali. It is a day when Krishna showed the whole world the power of his devotee's love and how he is bound, conquered by his devotee's love. So with your permission, I'd like to speak something on this subject. It took place in Gokul. Gokul is in the forest of Mahaban, or Bridhuban. Bridhaban. And according to Jiva Goswami and various Apuranas and Acharyas, Krishna on the day, or let us say, on midnight of John Mastami, he simultaneously appeared within this world in Mathura as the son of Devaki and Vasudev and in Gokul as the son of Nanda and Yashoda. It's a beautiful story. It culminates where Yashoda Mai and Nanda Maharaj, after performing one year of a Dwadasi observance, a beautiful little baby boy appeared in both of their minds. And at the end of that observance, the Supreme Lord appeared to them and said, that little baby boy that is appearing to you in your heart, that you have completely fallen in love with, that child will be your son. At the same time, by Krishna's arrangement, Yoga Maya and Krishna were both within the heart and womb of Yashoda. And Krishna, in his Aishwarya feature, or majestic feature, appeared within the womb of Devaki. We know the story how at midnight, Krishna just appeared outside of Devaki's heart and manifested a forearm form, fully dressed with beautiful royal celest transcendental jewels and garments. He was Lord Narayan. And she prayed, and Basudev prayed. And Devaki, she, in her motherly affection, she expressed that Kamsa has already killed six of my children. If he sees you like this, he will know that you are his enemy. He may harm you. Please hide this divine form of yours. And at that time, Yoga Maya, the Lord's spiritual energy, that energy like a wind, moving a lotus, took the two-armed little baby Krishna from Yashoda, from her heart, and brought, her to, brought him to Mathura. And because Krishna is Adipurusham, he's the original, absolute truth, and all other incarnations are included within him, the forearm form of Narayan merged into Yashoda Mai's son. Krishna. And then Vasudev brought that little child, put him next to Yashoda in Gokul, and she was asleep. And while she was asleep, Yoga Maya just came out and laid next to her. She didn't even know. And 
and Vasudev switched the children. So in this way, Krishna, in his original form, was born in Gokul. When he was just a few days old, Putana, a terrible, terrible, evil person, her greatest joy in life was to murder babies drink their blood and eat their flesh. She made Dracula and all these vampires look like little nursery school children. <laughs> she was really wicked. And she disguised herself as a beautiful woman and put terrible poison on her breast with the objective of feeding it to Krishna and killing him. And when she walked in, Krishna was just a little baby. Nanda Maharaj, after Krishna was born, there was Nandotsav. Beautiful, wonderful festival. Nanda Maharaj was Brajendra Nandana. He was, the, he was the king of Braj, and here was his son. So the whole of Brajbhumi was dancing and singing and playing music and performing Abhishekams and everything, all just to celebrate and through that celebration to invoke auspiciousness and safety and blessings upon the little baby Krishna. And while Nanda Maharaj went to Mathura for some tax purposes, Putuna came. She disguised herself to be so gentle looking that everyone was thinking, how beautiful. Maybe some angel or the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, or some heavenly lady has come to bless Krishna. Otherwise, how could she be so gentle and beautiful looking? So they put such trust in this woman. She just walked right inside, lifted up Krishna, and put her breast in his mouth. And little baby, he, he was looking so innocent, like he didn't know anything. And Putin was saying, ah, you see, he doesn't know, he will die. But Krishna knew everything. But he was so innocent, he just, sucked. And actually, Putana, there was some affection there that somehow or other within all the envy and hatred and violence, something little was there. Krishna drank. He drank her very life out from her and she expanded into a horrible form and dropped dead. And Krishna gave her the liberation of his own mother in the spiritual world. Because she came as a mother. So Krishna accepted the, he purified her of all the negative and just found that one little spark of positive and that was all that was left. And she was given the highest liberation. When Krishna was just three years old, I mean three months old, I'm sorry, three months old, he was put under a little cart and Shakatasura was liberated. He was a very ghostly being. And Krishna was merciful upon him. And when Krishna was about one year old, Trinavarta came. And Krishna liberated him. Eventually, Shukadev Goswami said, Krishna and Balaram, they were approximately the same age. And they loved to do everything together. When Rohini, Balaram's mother, and Yashoda, Krishna's mother, they would be constantly 
immersed in motherly love, serving their children. And sometimes Rohini and Yashoda, when they would look in little baby Krishna and Balaram's mouth, they would see little tiny teeth started to grow in. So they had a festival. That's what Vrindavan was. Anything Krishna did, they would have a festival. A, teeth, a tooth is growing, let us have a festival. <laughs> Krishna actually started to lean a little up from laying down. We should have a festival. He began to crawl, let us have a festival. A breeze moved his peacock feather, let us have a festival. <laughs> that is Vrindavan. Every, to celebrate Krishna, and everything else was <clears throat> organized around those celebrations for Krishna's pleasure. Because these celebrations were both to, be, to, ex, to share their love for Krishna with each other, to express their love for Krishna, and because they were thinking Krishna is just an ordinary little boy, it was to access wonderful blessings upon Krishna. Sukadeva Goswami tells in Srimad Bhagavatam how when Krishna and Balaram would crawl, they would love to crawl, especially in the mud. They would look for mud to crawl in the mud because it wasn't ordinary mud. It was the dust of Braj Bhumi, the holy, sacred Chintamani dust mixed with cow urine and cow dung. The sacred um, gifts of mother cow. And Krishna and Balaram, how much joy they would have crawling like little snakes with their legs straight behind them sometimes. They would just crawl through the mud and they would get all filled and, and the gopis would look at them. Their hearts would melt. And sometimes Krishna Balaram would see little baby calves laying down and they would, oh, they would pull the tail of the calf and the calf would get scared and jump up and start running and they would hold on to the tail and the calf would be dragging the little babies through the mud of Vrindavan and the babies would be laughing and laughing and laughing and the gopis would be watching and they would be laughing and clapping their hands. Sometimes Krishna and Balaram, they would be missing their mother so much and they would hear the tinkling of ankle bells. And they would crawl, 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 crawl to the gopi. And with great effort they would crawl up and then the gopi would look down and Krishna Balaram would see, it's not their mother, it's somebody else. And they'd start to cry and crawl away another, very fast another. In this way they spent their times. And the Bhagavatam tells that Rohini and Yashoda were in constant anxiety. Anxiety because their little babies were so restless and they were just crawling around everywhere and they were afraid they may be hurt by the horns of the cows or the sharp claws or teeth of monkeys or cats or dogs or all the different kind of weapons on the ground like thorns or, or sharp um, stones. And Shukadeva Goswami is Mahayogi, a great liberated yogi. But he's praising Yashoda and Rohini, telling how day and night they were totally immersed in the highest samadhi, liberated meditation of distress distress due to their intimate parental love 
for Krishna in Balaram. When we understand this, we really get off such a magnificent conception of the possibilities and the depth of yoga. From Sukadeva Goswami and the Bhakta's perspective, Shanti means peace from all the turbulence of this world, both within the mind and in the external environment. But beyond Shanti is Bhav, Prem, ecstatic love. And that Prem is something dynamic. To be in anxiety, worrying about Krishna is such a total absorption in Krishna and so much love is profusely emerging from our hearts in that anxiety. It is a transcendental liberated state of highest ecstasy. This is how the mothers were spending their days. And after some time, Krishna Balaram learned to walk. And as soon as they learned to walk, they began their lila as makanchor, butter thieves. The gopis, they would come on a regular basis to taste the sweetness of Krishna by speaking about him. But they would do it under the pretense of complaining to Mother Yashoda. They would say, your son, right now he's sitting very innocently, like such a good boy, but let us tell you what he does with his little friends, Krishna and Balaram, be just at the time of dawn, when the sun's rising, they walk around. They were just little tiny children. They would walk around Brajbhumi just to uh, do their research. <laughs> and then be before we go to the Goshala to milk our cows, they will let our calves loose. Un and the calves are running all over the place and we say, ah, our calves are loose. And, and our husbands and ourselves, we run out to catch the calves and there's nobody in the house. And while we're away, Krishna and his friends will go into our house and steal our butter and our yogurt and our curd. And and sometimes we'll come back and we'll actually catch them. There will be Krishna right in our house with his hand digging into the pot of butter and eating it. And we'll be just about to catch him and bring him to you. And Krishna will smile. We become so mesmerized so intoxicated with love by seeing that smile that we become stunned. We can't say a word. We can't move. We're just standing there 